Before I say anything, this video will go into detail and have spoilers for Avengers Endgame, so if you haven't seen the film yet and you don't want to get spoiled, don't watch this video! <sighs> Good. Now that that's said, let's talk about the film. Also, this cup is really full and there's potential for me spilling all the tea literally <laughs> during this video. Um, so, I'm gonna try to go through the film chronologically, I think, because I have a lot of opinions. And this film was three hours long and there was a lot of stuff happening and I forgot most of it already. So, let's try to go through it chron chronologically, starting with... Clint. And the fact <laughs> that at the theatre where I watched it, they kind of didn't really prepare us for the fact that the film was gonna happen now. You just kind of had like commercials and trailers and all that stuff. And then there was a short break, like the usual break between trailers. And then Clint Barton came onto the screen. And for a second I thought it was a trailer for another film that Jeremy Renner was in. But then I saw his daughter and I already knew that they would get dusted or I, I was strongly suspicious of the possibility of Clint's family being dusted. And Clint has a special place in my heart so the second I saw his daughter on the screen I started crying. Before anything happened I just started crying. And basically didn't stop. Basically I cried for three hours and then for like the 15-20 minute walk home. It was emotional. It was an emotional roller coaster. The beginning was kind of disappointing for me but in retrospect I think it was really well done. So the beginning where they all are separated and like are all really hopeless and all that stuff. It felt very long and even a bit boring maybe at times and like sort of yeah it didn't feel connected it didn't feel like one story just like little snippets of different stories and it didn't really connect it wasn't really like there was no flow to the beginning but, and whilst watching that, I found that really weird and kind of disappointing and especially um, when Thor um, basically beheaded Thanos, I was super disappointed because, hate me for saying this, but I like Thanos, I think he's a great character. Um, not a good guy, obviously, but I think he's a really amazing character um, and I really like Thanos and... Um, I just didn't think that was like a death worthy of Thanos. Um, so yeah, the, the beginning kind of felt disappointing. And now thinking about it, it made sense because that's exactly how the characters felt. They felt hopeless and disconnected from everyone and um, yeah, bored, but also just desperate for something to change and nothing made sense and no one belonged to anyone so it was just the way the beginning was made reflected the way the characters felt then when they started to form as a team you had the flow of the story again and they were connected again so it just really reflected um the storyline really well in the cinematography basically um so yeah i think they did a good job um, with kind of conveying the emotion through the way they made the film. Um, I also, <laughs> while we're on the topic of me liking Thanos, I also so thought that it was super interesting but also really in character and in my opinion a good decision of Thanos to destroy the Infinity Stones. It just matches his personality um, of being driven by this one goal that he's completely convinced by. Like he truly believes he's doing the right thing here. Um, and once he's done with that thing and once he restores balance to the universe, the Infinity Stones are useless and they've, they've done their part in the world as has he, which is also why he doesn't fight the Avengers when they come to him. Like, he's done. He, he 
he did what he had to do, as did the Infinity Stones. And I just think, yeah, I, I really enjoyed seeing the way they continued Thanos' characteristics that way. Ooh, okay. The Wet. I hated the Wet. I hated the Wet. Like, the Wet that got um, Scott Lang out of the Quantum thingy. That was so stupid! Like, that was such a stupid way for resolving that storyline. Especially when you think about the fact that it's such a big plot point that first of all he's in the Quantum Realm and knows how to like work in it and then that um, the whole um, 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 Pym family gets dusted and he's stuck in it and then in the trailer that he comes back it's just such a big thing and they just resolved it by a coincidence and I'm just I was so angry I was so angry you can't do that <laughs> like in my opinion, it should have been Scott's daughter who got him out of there, um, because she is clever enough to do that. She knows what's going on. Um, but it's just, yeah, I was just really annoyed at that. Um, I was also kind of annoyed at the Hulk thing, because it is so well done. Because it is so fantastic that they did this morphing of Bruce Banner and Hulk. Um, if you're new here, hi, I'm Hannah. I wrote my dissertation on Hulk because I love him so much. Hulk and Bruce Banner are very, very near to my heart. I love them dearly um, and they mean a lot to me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and Hulk is one of those characters like Natasha and Clint that's always underrated and overlooked and no one like bothers to actually portray their characters correctly. Um, and I really enjoyed that he now morphed Bruce and Hulk because that's a wonderful thing to do for his character and I really enjoyed the way he explained it, like saying um, that Hulk, that he always thought of Hulk as a, as a disease or like an illness and now we figured out that Hulk is actually the cure, which is wonderful because that's kind of how it works in the comics that he's always looking for a cure to the Hulk, to the disease that is the Hulk. And to finally realize that the Hulk himself is the cure is just... Oh, it made my heart so happy, like, oh, wonderful. But then he just says that and then they ignore it for the rest of the movie. And it's one of the things, like, I want to see those five years. I want to see that Hulk development. I want to know, like, how he did that, what, get, what, what went wrong. I want to see the conversations between Bruce and Hulk, kind of like the way we saw them in Infinity War, which was also used as a gag and not taken seriously as a character development. And I just... On the one hand, I love that they did that and that they put that in there. On the other hand, I hate that they overlook Hulk so much and never use the potential this character has. Um, same goes for Clint and Natasha, and that's something I really enjoyed about the Endgame, that Natasha and Clint had so much screen time and such also important scenes. And even though most of their important scenes were negative for them as characters, um, they still like had a big impact on the storyline. I just these two are basically the original Avengers. Like if you think about it, we always talk about like Captain America as the first Avenger and Tony Stark as like the original Avenger because he was the first that um, Nick Fury called an Avenger. But the thing is, Nick Fury was the one who founded this organization basically, so he's the head of it. And Clint worked for Nick long before any of the others even knew about him, so Clint probably helped with it. And then Clint got Natasha to Nick Fury, and Natasha was the one to get Tony to Nick Fury. So basically, Clint and Natasha are the originals. They are the ones that first started this whole thing and that got the others in there. And they are normal human beings. They don't have the advantage that any of the others have. Um, they have to actually work hard for this. And <clears throat> they, they do this because they're convinced it's the right thing and not because they happen to have the powers to be able to do this. And I just think 
these characters, again, like with Hulk, they have so much potential and it's often not used. But in this film it really was. And as I said, most of the scenes were negative for the characters themselves and heartbreaking to watch. But on the other hand, it was also really nice just to see so much of them. Like, yes, it was heartbreaking to see that sadness and that death and all of that. But in other films, you didn't even have the chance to feel heartbreak for them because they just weren't there. Also, can we talk about that scene with the Soul Stone? Because I still think it's stupid that the way to get the Soul Stone is to sacrifice a soul. I think you should get the Soul Stone when Red Skull tells you you have to sacrifice what you love most and you decide not to do that because that really proves that you know the worth of a soul because you, yeah, you appreciate it. You appreciate the worth of a soul and of love because you don't sacrifice it. Because if you do sacrifice it, that's like, you can't just, yeah, that's not really love. Um, so I, when, when Clint and Natasha were there and started like fighting about not wanting to, the, not wanting to let the others sacrifice themselves, I thought, they were gonna get the salt stone because of that. I thought that was gonna be the way for them to get it. I didn't think that one actually had to die and it was terrible to watch. I just, yeah, they just killed the one woman they had. And I just, yeah. I like the way they did the time travel thing. I'm not quite convinced that, like, saying you can time travel within the quantum realm was a bit too easy for me like it was kind of they kind of glossed over that um because it was never mentioned before like by hank Pym or something um but the way they then did the time travel and especially the way that bruce explained like how i really like the way that bruce said this thing with um when you are in your rear in your present and then go back to the past that then becomes your future. I just, yeah, I like the way he explained tra time travel and made sense um, and I enjoyed how they resolved the thing and also like in the end when they got back um, and when they brought back the infinity stones because they are linear parallel timelines and not like a loop and it's just, yeah, it made sense. I enjoyed that it made sense. Also, with um, bringing back the Infinity Stones, I know I'm jumping now, but whatever. Um, this was going to be a mess anyways. Um, I realized, and I don't know if this is something like that was supposed to be tricky to realize, or if I'm just being stupid, but I realized later that they couldn't bring back all the Infinity Stones because one was the one they didn't get because Loki got it. And we already know um, that there's gonna be a Loki TV show on the Disney streaming service. And I always assumed it was gonna be about Loki's like childhood. But now there is a timeline, a parallel timeline that has nothing to do with our Avenger MCU timeline, in which Loki got the Tesseract and just disappeared. So maybe that's the show? <laughs> also with the time travels I really enjoyed the teams they had like that was something I enjoyed um in comparison to Infinity War because in Infinity War I think they failed because they weren't a team they were little teams that were distanced from each other and that didn't work together and yeah they, they weren't the Avengers they were parts of the Avengers at different times and different places and stuff um but in Endgame, they really did come together as the entire team. And then they only split up for the time travel. But even with that, they talked about it as a team beforehand and they planned the whole thing together. But the the groups they did for the time travel were so amazing. I was so hoping that Clint and Natasha would get together for the time travel. And even though it ended badly, I'm really glad that they did that, that those two um, went back in time together. Um, also with um, Rhodey and uh, Nebula, like this this one sentence, this teeny tiny th scene where Rhodey said that he wasn't like that um, as well, like 
with being a robot basically I just ugh, it was such a tiny scene and was so short and was just basically one sentence but I really enjoyed that and like Rhodey basically letting Nebula know that she's not alone just yeah wonderful wonderful um, also <laughs> really clever that Bruce was the one to go um, to the time girl I forget her name um, because he understands how time works so no one else would have managed to understand what she was saying so I just yeah wonderful um, <laughs> also what was the other team oh um, and with Cap and Tony it's just so cool that they got to go back in time and meet such important people in their lives um, like the whole Tony um, and his father sequence was just so funny and heartwarming and also kind of sad and just yeah I really enjoyed that um, also just the fact like with Tony and Steve the movie did a great job of like showing that they have problems but also showing that those problems can always be overcome because in the end they are really close um, and they do depend on each other and they know that I was really scared um, in the final battle because they all just came back from being dusted and just like basically went back to being alive and then they had to go into battle. I was really scared that like half of them were gonna die again um, just like in battle just be killed by an enemy or something um, and with that I also really enjoyed again the teamwork like when they were getting the infinity stones across the battlefield and everyone was working together and everyone like took the infinity stones on a really short journey but they worked together and they helped, helped each other and they were looking out for each other and it was just such a wonderful the individual in the team moment I really enjoyed that and also I am not the biggest fan of Captain Marvel I don't enjoy her as a character um, but I did enjoy the way that they put her into this film like that she wasn't there too much but she also did have a role and like she had, did have a function in it and I really really loved the kind of female power scene uh, where all the women said like don't worry she's not alone um, that was just like so empowering and then again also so heartbreaking that Natasha wasn't there <laughs> oh yeah and then of course um, with Thanos being dusted and his whole team the thing is we didn't have Gamora in the end like it was also <laughs> it was already weird or kind of funny um, having past Gamora in the present and kind of dealing with this whole future that she doesn't understand why she has it um, and she wasn't there at Tony's funeral and she wasn't there later and the thing is when Tony snapped to basically kill off Thanos' people I was already a bit worried because basically Nebula and Gamora do belong to Thanos' team so did Tony just dust Gamora and maybe pass Nebula as well like I don't know where they are and I know that probably the third Guardians is gonna be about Peter Quill going to find Gamora and maybe he will but like I'm a bit worried that he actually dusted her because technically she is on Tannis' side or like at least Tony didn't know she wasn't anymore yeah it's a whole thing we're gonna see how this works out um, but as I said I did enjoy Thanos' or not enjoy I didn't enjoy any of the deaths obviously but I did appreciate Thanos' second death that they basically had a second chance at giving him an ending that was worthy of him and I really enjoyed how he just accepted it like he sat down and waited to be dusted because he knew that it was over and he just accepted it he accepted that this was it and yeah I just it was much better than the beheading and just yeah I appreciated that they didn't just leave it at the beheading and that was it with Thanos um, because he deserves better and yeah obviously like I didn't expect Tony to die at the beginning of the movie I was like um, I said that I would be really angry if at the end of the movie he didn't have a daughter anymore for some reason the option that the daughter wouldn't have a father anymore didn't occur to me so really really sad 
um, all the time, just all of them standing around him and like Peter saying goodbye and Pepper saying goodbye, just oh, so sad. <laughs> but I also like, can we talk about how strong of a woman and of a wife Pepper was in that scene? Like that she held back her pain in order to let him know that she was gonna be okay and that his daughter was gonna be okay and that he did the right thing. Like, that must have been so freaking hard and just, yeah, she's just, oh, she is such a badass. Even in such painful and emotional situations, she kept her shit together because she knew it was important for him to know that he didn't fail and just, oh, yeah. And then we have the funeral scene and all these people. Also, I actually, I'm really proud of this. I recognized the little boy at the funeral scene because I was a bit confused like at this random teeny boy standing there. But when we went out of the theater and talked about it, I uh, noticed that it must have been the boy from the second Iron Man, I think. So uh, Harley. Um, and I was really, really proud of that. <laughs> And yeah, it just was, it was, even though it was really sad to see Tony go, I also think, like, it's, it's okay, because, like, he, he decided to do this, it was his decision, he knew he, what he was getting into, and, oh god, I'm getting so, oh, I'm gonna cry again. <laughs> um, and he had all these people thanking him and being there at his funeral because he saved them and yeah it just it was for him as well it was a worthy ending and i enjoyed that i, I think the movie did a really good job of showing the characters in the way they die like that natasha sacrificed herself for clint for the person that means most to her um that tony wasn't arrogant or self-observed because he he isn't he just pretends he is and that thanos was really rational about it and didn't get emotional even at his own death of the big thing steve and bucky now I'm still not sure how I actually feel about this because I am really happy for Steve that he got to be with Peggy and I think it's that's such a beautiful thing they did there and like I'm really really happy for him. I'm really happy that happened. That was one of the scenes where I was happy crying. So as I said I was crying throughout the entire movie and afterwards but about like a third of it was happy crying. Um, and I just, yeah, I'm really happy for him, but <laughs> I am sad that he didn't take Bucky with him. I do understand why they did that. Not only because they're gonna have the Bucky and Sam TV show or like Disney show and obviously needed Bucky, but I also think that like from the way Bucky acted, like saying I'm gonna miss you and um, kind of smiling when Steve didn't come back from the time travel. He knew. He knew this was gonna happen. He knew this was Steve's plan and he didn't say he wanted to come with him. Um, and I talked about it with some people um, and we agreed that Bucky was probably the one who decided that he wasn't gonna come with Steve. We also agreed that kind of even though Bucky also was like missing those 70 years um, that Steve now went back to actually live, Bucky didn't miss them in the same way. Like for Steve those 70 years really like didn't happen. He was just on ice, nothing happened. Um, but for Bucky, he did live those 70 years, just not as himself and like really badly and negatively and traumatic. Um, but he did he did have that time and it was a really bad time for him and just it's kind of like um yeah he didn't have anything to go back to like Steve was missing out on something he was missing out on his life with Peggy 
um, and he had something specific to go back to and to live um, and Bucky didn't have that he he missed those 70 years but he didn't miss anything specifically um, and though I would have loved to see like those 70 years in which Steve and Bucky like go back to relive their friendship like happily and together I would have loved that and I think um, Steve and Bucky and Peggy would have been an amazing trio but yeah, it's just, it was Steve's thing that he was missing out on and Bucky had his life. He he can be happy in, in this time now and he doesn't need to go back. He's mi not missing out on something, he's just missing something. Um, so I get why they did it. It just still makes me sad. Like, I, I can accept it um, and I can understand it. It just makes me sad that they didn't have that time together um, and also <laughs> with Cap obviously him being able to lift the hammer was amazing it was so good but also we knew kind of like like Thor said we knew we saw this coming because their first time in Ultron when they all tried to lift the hammer it did move when Cap tried it did move a bit um, and maybe he didn't want to do it because like he knew Thor would be weird about it or he was like not quite worthy yet and was like hard to lift it or anything and now he's completely worthy I don't know but I really enjoyed that it was such a great plot twist that he's now worthy and can like lift the hammer so good um, but <laughs> the hammer doesn't do the lightning thing like Cap did the lightning thing and that's not how it works that's Thor's thing as the god of thunder and as like as a god that's his thing that's not something the hammer does Steve can't just suddenly also make lightning just because he can lift the hammer that's that's not how it works that's not how it works but yeah okay <laughs> I think that's all the thoughts I had I probably missed like a bunch of it and like I'm probably going to think of thousands of things. Overall, I think this was a worthy ending. And I think that's the most important thing, basically. Um, like, it was sad to see uh, this, like, end of an era. And it's sad to say goodbye to so many characters. And it was really, like, it was tragic and it was sad and it was heartbreaking. And I'm gonna miss this, like I'm gonna miss this era so much. It was a worthy ending to everything we've been through in the last 10 years. And that's the most important thing. They did a really good job. Um, they also did a really nice tribute to all the, the actors and all the characters in the credit scenes, like with the, with the signatures. Um, that made me happy cry <laughs> a lot. Um, it also made me cry that there was no credit scene. Because it's kind of, it's final now. There's no afterwards to put in the credit scene. It's over for these characters, or like most of them. I mean, we know there's going to be another Spidey movie and there's going to be the Disney shows and all that stuff, but yeah, this, this era is over now. There's nothing more to it, but they did a wonderful job of, yeah, of ending it and with the credit scenes just again with Clint and Ned being the first ones with the signature thing it made me really really happy um, and yeah it was worthy of these 10 years and they did a good, they did a good job um, so I really most of all I appreciated this <laughs> and also kind of paved the way for the new era, which I'm looking forward to. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. As I said, I probably missed a bunch of stuff, so let me know your thoughts. Definitely let me know, um, like, all your thoughts, all your opinions, all your heartbreak. Um, and also, if you have, like, theories about it, or if there's, like, details you saw and, like, interpretations and stuff, I live for Marvel conspiracy theories. That's my kind of stuff. I love that. Um, so please let me know all of that. Let's have a little discussion. And yeah, I think that's most of the stuff I wanted to say. Um, 
Thank you, Marvel. <laughs> and thank you for watching this. I hope you always have a reason to smile, or to happy cry every once in a while. And I shall see you soon. Bye!